In physics, energy is defined as the ability to do work. This is a scalar quantity describing the property of an object or system that can be transferred but never created or destroyed. It's measured in joules, and the energy of one joule is defined as the energy needed to apply a force of one newton for one meter. This is written as J equals N times M, or joules equals newtons times meters. Remember that a newton is a unit of force needed to accelerate one kilogram by one meters per second squared. So a joule can also be written as one kilogram meter squared per second squared. There are a bunch of different types of energy. These can be placed into two main categories, kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. It comes in two main categories on the macroscopic scale, translational and rotational kinetic energy. On the small scale, or atomic scale, kinetic energy makes up part of thermal energy, or heat. Translational energy is the energy stored by motion in a straight line, and rotational energy is kinetic energy stored by a rotating object. Without going into the derivation of the formulas, which can get into some details that are unnecessary for our purposes, the formulas for kinetic energy are Ek equals one half mv squared for kinetic energy of translation, or kinetic energy equals one half mass times velocity squared, and Ek equals one half i omega squared, or kinetic energy equals one half moment of inertia times angular velocity squared. Notice how similar these two equations are. When thinking of a rotating object's energy, the moment of inertia takes the place of mass mass being how difficult something is to move in a straight line, and moment of inertia being how difficult it is to spin, and velocity is replaced by angular velocity. For any given rigid or point object, the sum of these quantities is the total kinetic energy. So that's kinetic energy. The other main type of energy is potential energy, and there are lots of different types of potential energy out there. These types of energy are all around us all the time. Chemical potential energy is stored in the food you eat electrical potential energy in the battery in your phone, magnetic potential energy between an oxygen tank and the bore of an MRI before it flies in to wreak havoc, gravitational potential energy. Every time you climb a flight of stairs, you're imbuing yourself with more and more gravitational potential energy, only to release it on the way down, elastic potential energy in a rubber band or spring. Energy is constantly being converted back and forth between all of these different forms. Your phone is a great example. It takes the electrical potential energy stored in the ions of a battery and releases it as a force on electrons causing a current. This electrical energy is converted to radiant energy, such as the light coming out of the screen and the radio waves it uses to communicate, sound or mechanical energy as it vibrates or sound coming out of the speakers, and thermal energy as waste heat. The unexpected release of any built-up gravitational potential energy your phone may have may result in using a phone with a screen like this, or at least until your contract is up. Physics is great because Using a pen and paper, we can describe how all these transfers happen. We already talked about the kinetic energy formulas. Here are formulas for two types of potential energy. The elastic energy in a spring is given as E equals one-half kx squared, where k is the spring constant with units of kilogram per second squared. This will be known or can be worked out for any given spring. And x is the distance of spring displacement. Gravitational potential energy is given as E equals mgh, where m is the mass of an object, little g is the gravity of Earth, or about 9.8 meters per second squared, and h is the height of the object in question. Again, we won't go into the derivations, but if you're interested in learning more, a great starting point is located here. So how are these useful? We're going to use a totally not real world example that you should never do at home. Say you and some buddies want to launch a potato into the ocean, and you want to see how high you can get it. You've got one of those stretchy workout springs they sell on late night TV, and you fashion a little holder in the middle for the potato. You know the spring constant for each of the springs in the thing, it's written on the box, and you have a big one kilogram potato. Assuming that you and your friends can pull the potato back in the springs for about a meter, how high will it go and how fast will it be going as it shoots out? Well, we start with the potential energy you put into the spring. E equals one half kx squared. The box for the chest expander spring thing says that each spring has a constant of 400 kilograms per second squared, and there are five springs total. So the energy will be five times one half times 400 times one squared, and here's the tricky part, times two, because since you're pulling back from the middle of the springs, you're actually pulling back each spring twice. So work that out, and it comes to 2,000 joules.
So knowing that this energy is all going into gravitational potential energy, we know that 2,000 joules equals mgh. Working this out, we can say that 2,000 equals 1 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared times h, or the height that we want to know. And this is about 204 meters. So how fast is it going? Same process. 2,000 joules equals 1 half mv squared, where 2,000 equals 1 half times 1 times v squared. So 4,000 joules equals v squared. So v equals the square root of 4,000, about 63 meters per second, or 140 miles per hour. Now, if you think you have this general concept of transferring energy between one form and another down, head over to Veritasium, link is here or in the description, and watch the bullet block experiment. Try and predict how all the energy transfers will play out. I hope you've learned a little bit about how to think about energy, what it is, how it can move from one form to another.